think I wanted to, to clarify a little bit because your questions were about whether an animal is saying yes, no, or maybe. For me, with animals, a no is followed by aggravation, like, like hissing or um, growling or um, like really being aggravated and upset and just like can't settle down at all. That's a no, but if an animal is pacing, I start Reiki, then they go to the furthest corner of the room and they lay down and go to sleep. That's a yes. But that's a yes, you know, I, I want to be part of this session, but I don't want to be close to you physically. I feel safer over here, but I still want to soak it up. So keeping an eye on the, the relaxations, any signs of relaxation, some animals are self-conscious and they don't want you to see. <laughs> I know this sounds weird, but some animals, I've seen this with um, dogs, cats, and horses, all of them. Um, they, some of them want to connect to Reiki, but they don't want other animals to see that they're connecting to Reiki, or they don't want you to see that they're connecting to Reiki. And so either they won't relax when other animals are watching, but as soon as the other animals fall asleep, then they'll relax. Or they'll always get up and go right outside of your eyesight. They'll just turn the corner into the hallway and lay down and sack out and do the Reiki nap. They don't want your eyes looking at them when they're relaxing. I, I can't explain it, but there have been animals like that. They don't want to take their Reiki nap if I can see them doing it. They want to have their own privacy and have a really nice, calm, peaceful space in their own room. And that's, so that would be also a, a yes. Remember we're letting animals lead. So how that looks for every animal will be different. And so if an animal doesn't wanna sit on my lap, that's fine. If they don't wanna sit next to me, that's also okay. If they wanna sit across the room and face the other direction, also fine. And if they wanna leave the room, also good. Um, but don't give up if an animal leaves the room because a lot of times they'll come back. Sometimes they're self-conscious and they wanna just go out in the hall and lay down and go to sleep without prying eyes watching them. <laughs> Sometimes they're testing you. Well, you told me this was my choice. Are you gonna follow me now? Yeah, see, you're forcing this on me. You followed me. This is not my choice. I don't feel comfortable. A lot of times they're testing you. So when they, I've had a lot of animals, as soon as like, I'll come to someone's home and they have kind of a skittish cat and they're like, oh, I'm, they're so excited. You're here to do Reiki for my cat. This is so great. And their cat's like, you're going to do what? And why are you here? And I don't know you. And so the cat's like gone. And they're like, oh, should I go get the cat and bring them to you? I'm like, no, no, just wherever they are is fine. If they stay in the other room, also fine. I'm going to just sit on the floor here in the living room. I'm just going to do my meditation. If you want to sit on the couch and just rest, you know, and just share the space, that's great. But, but the cat ran upstairs there. They're under the bed. It can, can it reach them? I'm like, yes, they're very sensitive. This will be fine. If they stay under the bed the whole time, that's completely fine. It's up to them. So I'll sit, do my meditation. So many times my eyes are closed. I feel like someone's watching me. I open my eyes. The cat came down sitting in front of me, staring intently at me. And the person's like, what's going on? What are they doing? <laughs> it's like, well, I didn't chase after them. I created the space. I invited them to step in. They're now stepping into the space. But if I went to that person's house and the cat ran out of the room and I sat down and started Reiki and the cat came back into the room hissing with his ears back and growling at me, then I'd be like, okay, they're saying no. <laughs> and at that point I, I would say, you know, let's try another time because sometimes they're also testing you. What if I say no? What are you going to do? Are you going to respect that? And I always say, yeah, okay, we'll stop. But let's try another time and see if it goes differently. Many times when I've only had a handful of times when animals have said no, but then the second time I come back, they say yes. So a lot of times it's just, they don't trust you yet. 
They're not sure if they are in charge, if you are going to listen to them. As soon as they realize, oh, this is on my terms, you totally listen to me, then they're like, okay, well, I'm not sure, but let's try it. So that's on us to really keep that inward focus on the meditation, to not be pushing anything, to not be thinking about what's wrong. Because that also can cause an animal to say no. If you're thinking about, oh, you're having behavior problems as you're sitting there and you're thinking about all the bad things their person told you that they did. <laughs> They're gonna be like, you know, I've had cats just be like, pissed like you come into my house and think about how bad I am this is the worst right so we want to you know keep that positive like you're perfect and all is well and then they're like oh yeah come on in I like you my parents have been pissed at me for days but you see how beautiful I am come in you know so a lot of it is just the way we are the way we set everything up in our mind and our heart and the vibration that we're giving off. And that can, that comes with practice. So if you have a no from an animal, intern, think about that inside. What happened? Why did they say no? Is there anything I could have done differently that might've you know, made things better? Is there anything I did physically? Maybe I was standing up and I was too tall of them and they felt uncomfortable. What if I sit on the floor next time, you know, or maybe, you know, the person was crying when I came in and told me all these terrible things that happened to their animal. And, and I was thinking about it and I couldn't get past it. And my energy was all freaked out. Maybe next time we don't talk about anything disturbing and I can just come in and be calm, you know? So there's a lot of things. If we self-reflect every time we do a Reiki, se an animal Reiki session, if it goes well, what did I get right? If it doesn't go well, is there anything that I contributed to in that that maybe I could change for next time? And that's really how I developed the Let Animals Lead method was by really examining myself when things went wrong and how I could make it better. And so, you know, 90% of the time when an animal says no, it's something we could have changed. You know, there's been a few times where animals, and this has been shelter animals, I think they had something mentally wrong. They were so like mentally traumatized and like, like out to lunch, like just PTSD. And they were so traumatized from human abuse that they couldn't tolerate any kind of human presence or, you know what I mean? So there's been a couple of times like that where it's just, it's okay to say, this is not right for them. You have to let that go when that happens because we can't solve every problem. We always want to honor the animal's choice, even if we wish they would have chosen something different. <laughs>